Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props, and in today's video, I am gonna show you how I printed, painted, assembled, and finished this just incredibly detailed Chris Knight from Dune. I love this project. I cannot wait to show you how I did this. So I am a huge Dune fan. I've talked about it before when I built the bull statue. You can look at that video, one of these corners. And this was just so much fun to make, to try to figure out how to make it translucent in the blade up to a point. And really, really happy with the detail on this. Now, if you like this file, you can actually get this over at my website, 3dprintedprops.com. There is a coupon below. Also, I have a Patreon where you get four files a month for $12. So go ahead and check that out. Links below as well. I had to use a bunch of different techniques to get this to look the way it looks. And I could not be more happy with it. So let's go ahead behind the fake wall and I'll show you how I did it. So I am super happy with how this print came out. I did this on my Piapoli Phenom Prime. That thing is a workhorse. I love all the detail you get with it. And I just to tell you, I don't think I've ever had a failed print that wasn't my fault. Now, the main thing I knew this prop had to have was this translucent nature, because this is the tooth of Shai Halud. So I mixed some Sierra Tech transparent and some fast gray, and it really sells it. I love how that looks. And again, look at the detail on this thing. A, it's in the model, the detail's there, but the printer really kicks it off in that wood grain and the hammered metal, and it fits really, really well in the hand. And lastly is the sheath. Uh, this is usually like a smooth leather that I've seen in the references. So this is just a simple smooth sheath with some really neat detailing. Now, uh, I do sell this, and it comes with this leather strap on it and without it. So if you wanna add your own leather, you can. Now we're gonna do a little bit of sanding. We're gonna start at 220, go to 320, and then 400. And we're gonna be you know, fairly aggressive on the sheath because it's pretty smooth and doesn't have a ton of detail. And we're just gonna go through each piece, 220, then 320, then 420. But on the blade, you know, I took it easy. I didn't wanna lose that detail. Now I know what you're thinking, it's really messy. This is what you gotta do. Wash it, soap and water, and get in there with a toothbrush to really clean it off. And here it is, it's ready to paint. I know you're thinking, where? You didn't prime it. I did, I actually used some clear primer because I was out of the regular primer. So it is primed and ready to go. We're gonna use some of these basics acrylics, some different browns, cheap paintbrush, and a little sponge to do our dippling. Remember we did that actually on a couple other prints that I've been working on, uh, the bowl and whatnot, and you can see those videos in one of the corners where they pop up. So I'm just going to hit this with a basic sort of brown mixture I came up with that's like a brownish red and just go ahead and paint the whole thing. Now you're working with acrylic in between. You can just use a hairdryer to dry it off, which is what I did because I am impatient. Then I went ahead and painted the strap. And as you can see in the lower one, I made a mess of it, but you clean that up later. And with weathering, no one will even see it. You hope if they do, you just fix it. Now here's where I'm working with this sponge. Now in the references I looked at, it would be darker towards the top and it would get lighter and more sort of weather towards the bottom. Again, weathering is telling a story. So I'm seeing this, uh, the, the Fremen has it on his hip. Part of his cloak might be covering up that one portion, like towards the top of the knife, the, where the blade goes in. And as you get towards the bottom, that's, you know, affected by the sun more. Maybe that scrapes in the, uh, in the sand more. So what I'm doing is I'm just modeling some different color reds and blues uh, throughout this thing with this natural sponge. Because this way I'm getting, a more, well, I'm getting a more natural look than I would, would say, just a straight paintbrush. And I'm just working that down and putting in some darker colors and really, really, you know, giving this a natural sort of look. You want to try to go all over the place. Don't concentrate on one place. Want more than a little bit. Then I'm going to use these washes. And I found that this is a really great way to add some really cool authenticity to your print is using these washes. You can also just use some straight uh, black acrylic and water on a, a bristly brush and then just sort of flick it on there. And those little dots and stuff, again, they really help sell how real it is. You can see how those little dots are in there. Now we're gonna go ahead and weather the strap. And this is just a, a little bit of um, burnt umber, I believe, or the, the, the tannish color with a little bit of red and some of that unbleached titanium. And I'm just hitting the edges again where things would happen. You know, you'd get 
wear on edges. Take a look at old pictures of old leather and things like that, and it'll really help you, you know, decide what you want to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some black in here. This is a black wash. Everything that I use will be in the description below. And uh, I'm just going to dab it away so it's just in the cracks. Now, technically, in a lot of the things I saw, that was a, a lighter color, but I wanted to go dark. And here you can see the, the uh, splotches, the sort of bristle brush there where it's sort of spattering. That's the word I'm looking for, spattering. On there, you can see it looks very, very natural. Now I'm going to use some of this Tamiya for the metal. I love this stuff. Uh, it is an acrylic, uh, so you know, you'll have to wait a little longer for it to dry, but uh, it has such a neat look to it. It isn't very, very shiny, shiny metallic, but I thought it was the perfect paint for this handle. And again, you got to get in all of, you know, the cracks and crevices there. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, wood. I just mixed up some more of that brown, but I put a little bit more red in it. Uh, because a lot of the references I saw, I looked like it was a redder wood. And uh, now I'm going to dry brush it. So I, I got a little too much paint on there. I'm just going to wipe it off. So I've got this dry brush, and I've just got sort of a reddish brown mixture with a little of that titanium white. And I'm just scraping it across the side. This is what dry brushing is. Just scraping it across the side so it just hits those highlights. It doesn't go in the deep crevices, and it just picks up all the little detail. And really, really, you can see here, it just hits those sides and really starts giving this thing shape. So happy with the detail in this thing. It is crazy. Now, of course, uh, th those little cracks, they're not dark enough, so I'm just going to go ahead. And that's, I think, just a straight acrylic. Okay, so now I'm filling in all the runes and the little divots with just a wash. And this is just some black acrylic and water uh, because, you know, those things are darker than the metal itself. And I'm just washing it off now or wiping it off and leaving it in the cracks. I'm not going too hard with it, but now we need to make it a little bit shinier, add a little bit more highlight. And you can see, again, we're dry brushing, we're wiping a lot of the paint off and we're just letting it skate across. And you can see how it really starts to look like it's like a brushed metal. But some of the silver did get into the runes and into those cracks. So I really need to make those stand out a little bit more. So I went through all the type with some black acrylic and I'm just hitting all the little dots here and there to fill those in with some black to really make it look this way. Now here's where I made a mistake. I actually tried to dry fit this in and test it, but I didn't, I, I knew it wasn't gonna fit, but I did it anyway and I cracked it. So I epoxied it in and it was kind of you know a cob job so i'm using some epoxy sculpt to reinforce it and i'm using just some water and some tools some some clay tools to really help sturdy that up you know never force something in especially acrylic because it just cracked so here we go we're going to start working on the blade after i sanded that uh, epoxy sculpt down and if you look at sort of references, you can see how this black area doesn't go all the way up the blade. It goes a little bit past the carvings, and then it sort of fades off. So I'm going to put this wash on. This is just acrylic paint, black, with some water. And I'm letting it soak in a little bit because I want it to stain the actual print, and it needs to stay in those cracks. And I'm just going to wipe it away lightly with a paper towel. Uh, so I can see exactly how much is going to be left behind and know if I need to put some more on top of that. And I really kind of like it. It, it looks natural. Uh, I actually went ahead now and just wiped away too much, so I'm going to have to add a little bit more. And again, now I'm just putting some at the bottom because I noticed that, you know, it would be darker, at the, it's the darkest at the bottom, and then it moves up. So here I'm just sort of letting the brush skate across, and I really like how that looks, hitting a few parts up there and really wiping that off because I just want it in the crack. And you can see the detail this stuff picks up is crazy. Now, I noticed also in the reference at the very bottom, it was almost completely black. So this is just a straight black acrylic, and I'm just sort of working it in around the base, but making it look uneven so it has that real natural look. And that's what you're trying to go for here is natural look about it. And look at this thing. I am so, so happy with it. And I have to say, this is right up there now as probably one of my favorite 
props that I have made. I love the detail in this thing. Now, if you want to purchase this file and print it out yourself, you can head over to my site, 3dprintedprops.com. There's a coupon code below. You can also check out my Patreon. You get four files a month for $12. And I think that is a pretty good deal, especially for something with this much detail and quality. I absolutely love this file. Guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.